This is Richard Wolf with a response to a question sent in by a member of our Patreon community, in this case, Daniel Bonucci. I want to thank Daniel for his question and to respond. Basically, Daniel wonders about how worker co-ops will be funded, how we can make a transition to a worker co-op based economy, where will the funding come to enable these co-ops to start uh, and to enable them to grow? And perfectly good question and one that arises often. I'm going to give you a theoretical answer and then I'm going to give you an example of how in one country, in this case the United Kingdom, uh, this is being concretely planned uh, by one of the two major political parties. So first, theoretically, well, you could fund it in a number of ways. Probably the most logical would be out of taxes. In other words, that in a, an economy based on worker co-ops, the government would establish, based on taxation, uh, a huge fund whose purpose would be to help start and to help grow worker co-ops. Uh, this money would be made available to worker co-ops because it's a social objective to grow them, uh, probably on a preferential basis. That means perhaps at lower interest rates, uh, if it were loans, than what they would have to pay at a bank, uh, perhaps grants, perhaps a mixture of loans and grants. Uh, people planning to start a worker co-op would have to submit a work plan, uh, a, a program, if you like, for how they're going to proceed. There would be experts with experience and so on sitting on government boards to decide which plans look reasonable, which meet an important need, regional or industrial, and so on. That would be one way to do it, but there would be no need to limit it to that. You could allow decentralized funding. That is, not just the federal government, but state governments, local governments, could have funds like that set up uh, to facilitate the growth and expansion of worker co-ops. Just the way, by the way, that we have in the past set up such funds to help particular distressed industries. Farmers, for example, had special farm banks set up, farm loan situations set up. Minority businesses were able to tap local, state, and federal resources when they were shut out of the conventional market, uh, women's industries, and so on. There are countries doing this for businesses that are interested in climate change and doing something about the environment. All that would have to happen is that the plans of such institutions would now include the purposeful development and building of worker co-ops as something we want the society to have so that our people can look at them, can work in them, and can make a informed decisions democratically about how much of the economy should be organized as worker co-ops. Local churches could be a source of funding. Self-funding through various crowdfunding mechanisms could be developed with or without government support. There are lots of ways of raising the money, nor would I necessarily be opposed to uh, having public borrowing. Uh, securities could be issued, loans in effect, in which people who want to see this kind of economic system develop are in a position to lend money uh, and to get a reasonable, not very large, but a reasonable rate of return uh, much as they might have gotten if they'd put it in a savings bank, only now they're putting it somewhere where their beliefs and where the society's well-being is part of the motivation. Now for the example. The Labour Party in England, the number two political party, has committed itself to the following law, which they say they would pass once they were elected to become the next prime minister, become the majority party in England, they would pass a law that has two parts. Part number one, any business in England that wants to continue the way it is, is free to do so. 
But if the industry, or the firm rather, were to decide either to close down, or to move out of the country, or to sell itself to another company, or to go public by issuing shares, the law would require such a firm to give what's called the right of first refusal to the workers in that company to buy it and convert it to a worker co-op. Of course, the owner would only have to sell it to the workers if they had the money to buy it, which leads to the second part of that law. Where would the money come from, the funding in effect, for such worker co-ops when workers chose to go that way? And the British Labour Party's answer is, the government will lend it to them. And why? Because the Labour Party is on record saying, the British people have the right for free choice to choose between a top-down hierarchical capitalist system, on the one hand, or a democratic, worker-owned and operated co-op system, on the other. And the only way to have a democratic free choice is for the government to create, alongside the existing capitalist enterprises, a whole network of worker co-op enterprises so people can shop from them, work in them, observe them, and then decide how they want the economy of Great Britain in the future to look. More capitalist or less? More worker co-op or less? It's a commitment the Labour Party has made and it shows that this funding problem is well understood and solutions to it are coming down the pike and they're coming fast. Thank you again to Daniel Bonucci for sending in an important question. I hope it's of interest to our larger Patreon community whose support and interest is valuable to us as I never tire of saying. This is Richard Wolff for Democracy at Work.